everyone, it's Janie back again. Um, you thought you got rid of me, didn't you? But I'm back. Um, two weeks after the last set of patterns were released for the Crochet Along, I've been seeing all your amazing work online, all your pictures that you've been sending to me of your finished blankets. And I'm so happy that so many of you found the Crochet Along experience a happy one during these unprecedented times. Um, I'm back today because I finally got the um, new colourway of the crochet along to show you. It's on my lap, I'll show you in a second. Um, it got lost in the post, which is why I couldn't show it to you last time. But thankfully it arrived back with me and uh, I can show it to you today. You can see in front of me I've also finished the two cushion covers that um, I've designed on the back of the crochet along and the patterns for these will be available in September and I'm going to show you those in more detail in a minute. Um, for those of you that don't know, the crochet along ran originally between April and a couple of weeks ago, so just into August. Um, it was run over 14, sort of 14, 16 weeks and a set of patterns was released every fortnight. Um, to make the fruit garden crochet blanket, sorry, excuse me. Um, so we ran it through once and uh, we were just very aware that there's many people in the world that did not get their yarn packs, weren't able to source the yarn, um, weren't in the position to download patterns. So what we decided to do was do the whole thing all over again and uh, release a new version of the crochet along in the autumn. Um, originally our plan was to release the crochet along in September, um, unfortunately because of huge global demands on yarn, everyone in the world suddenly wants to learn to knit and crochet, which is fabulous, um, but what that has meant is that getting yarn is harder than it was, and so yarn companies, Starcraft in particular, are waiting a long time for their yarn to be delivered. So what we've decided to do is we've decided to put the crochet along the new version back until October. Um, so that gives you all plenty of time um, to source your yarn and get yourself ready for the rerun of the crochet along. Um, and so what we did is in the meantime, you can go online in September and get the patterns for the cushions. Um, I've done two, I've done one in the recipe two and one in recipe one. And I'll show you the backs of these in a minute because the back of that one in particular, the bigger one, is slightly different to the front. Um, so that just leaves me to show you the new version of the crochet along. It was inspired by um, one of May Morris's favorite palettes of kind of duck egg and peachy colors. So if I hold it up like that and smile behind it, you can probably see an idea of my color palette. I'm going to show you in a minute, I'm going to show you my mood boards and more of the close-up shots of this colorway. Um, so I hope you'll stick with me for the next five minutes or so and um, see what I've got in store for you. Um, that's it for a second and just... Uh, Keep watching and I hope you'll like what I've done and I really hope you'll join me again in the autumn when we start the fruit garden crochet along all over again. In the meantime, I hope you stay safe and well. So when I'm starting on a new design, I tend to make myself a few mood boards first and these are images of um, some of May's embroideries that Sarah and I saw at the Dovecot Studios up in Edinburgh in February um, when we went to see an exhibition of May's work. And these are not the greatest representations actually. In reality, they are far brighter. Um, but when I was looking at May's work, I could see it. There's another example here actually, if I bring this one in. I could see that she tended to use this palette quite a lot. Um, this palette of kind of peachy colours with duck egg blues in them as well. So if I just show you that there, you can see that she used peaches and oranges and sort of duck egg colours quite a lot. Um, so when I was looking at a new palette for this design, um, that is straight away what I went for, these lovely sort of like um, more subdued colours than the blue version that we did originally and... Um, I wanted something quite different as well to the um, yellow and um, caramelly coloured one too. Um, 
I also wanted it to be a bit more um, contemporary, a bit more vibrant. So you can see from this piece here, this is the hollyhock piece. Um, it's quite a lot brighter than the other versions. And if I bring this one back in again, you'll see that this is the dianthus here. With um, This is my sample where I was testing the borders. You can see how much brighter I've gone on this colourway. Um, so... Um, yeah, I hope you like it. It's kind of like, I really like it. I like the fact that it's that little bit more vibrant and a little bit more um, trendy, if you like, compared to the other ones. Not quite so traditional. Um, if I just bring in a few of the samples here, then you can see um, what they look like as well. And uh, there's that one again, that same orangey. I've got a real thing about orange at the moment, so I really wanted to get orange in there. I think it's quite a... Um, contemporary colour. It reminds me of my 70s childhood as well when everything was orange. Um, so <laughs> I really like to get orange in designs and I really wanted as well for this to bring in some quite unusual colour combinations so I really love the fact that it's got the pinks and the kind of mellow yellow in here. Um, in terms of the yarns I've used for this design I originally wanted to use the naturals which is what was version 2 of the crochet along the cotton and bamboo but I actually couldn't find a palette really that worked in quite that had the same sort of vibrancy as I was trying to encapsulate in this picture here really um, so I went and looked again at the Life DK range and you'll see in here that I've used this is a new yarn in the Life DK range actually it's called um, Duck Egg Nep and it's got this lovely kind of fleck through it which I thought was really really nice so I've used Life DK um, you'll see this one actually is a slightly lighter colour that's the um, that's mint that background on that one um, so I've used Life DK in most cases um, there's also a little bit of this yellow here and this um, colour here this peachy colour are from the special DK range that's buttermilk and vintage peach and then I've used to get this nice pink that I thought was the right kind of colour. That is um, Bellissima, Starcraft Bellissima. So they're all DK weight yarns, um, but they are that little bit woolly, which again, I really like that feel. And I think it gives it, because um, May would have used a lot of wool in her work as well. So I really like the fact that it's got the wool in and kind of did, it did what I wanted it to do um, when I did this colourway. Um, so that's that's me showing you the design inspiration and I'll show you a few more close-ups of the actual blanket itself. So here we go, here's the blanket. You can see this is the clementine motif, that lovely orange really gives the idea of the um, oranges on the tree. And then if I just try and pan around there you can see in more detail the other parts of that design as well. Let's just come down a bit there. So you've got the purple aster, which again, I left that purple because I wanted that heathery shade in there. This is the um, hollyhock, my favorite, probably my favorite piece out of the design. Um, and you can see that I left all the other elements pretty much alone. It's got the same, nothing about the design has been changed. It's got the same border. And on the edge, it's got the same border as well, that lovely wavy border. Um, and there, in all its glory, is the acanthus motif, um, which I know many of you are very happy you've completed now. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's it. I hope that gives you a better idea of what the colourway will be like. We're going to do some proper photography of it later on this week so that we have some really nice home shot type style, styled images to show you. And um, those will be up on social media mine and Starcraft very soon. Um, so I'm just gonna, the next thing I'm gonna do is just show you the two cushion designs that I've come up with and those will be available in September. Um, as I said, this version, um, the patterns for these will come out in October and what we're going to do is we're going to do um, substitution documents so that you can go online and download the original patterns and then you'll get have a document that tells you where to swap colors. Um, yeah, so that's it. So that's October and then the cushions that I'm about to show you will be September. So this is the cushion cover that I've made in line with recipe one of the crochet along. 
you can see I've used nine blocks from the project. I've used hollyhock um, in each corner. I've used purple aster, there's four of those. And then I've put the chrysanthemum in the middle there. Um, it's up to you what motifs you put on there. You could choose any and make the front of the panel. Um, and I've done that using the parchment background. And then on the back of the cushion, I've made it so that it's in two sections. So I've used the infamous acanthus motif at the top here and just added a couple of extra little flowers to make that um, a bit more special at the top. I've put the border on so that I could make a nice button band with these lovely brassy buttons that I felt were very kind of Victorian-y, Morris kind of inspired. And then at the bottom of the cushion, if I just hold it up very slightly, there's the three motifs there that you could start with these if you wanted to because they're the easier ones. That's two forget-me-nots and a columbine in the middle there. Um, this is made to around about 50 centimetres square. Um, so I've just bought a standard cushion pad and popped it in there. You can see compared to me, it's quite a nice big cushion. Um, and if you have already made the blanket, then you can compare um, your central three panels, um, sets of three, to see just how big that's going to come up. Um, I think this is a really nice cushion. And what I've done is I've used, you'll find if you've done the crochet along, you'll be able to use some of your leftovers so that you don't have to buy more yarn. Um, for example, the batik and, and some of the other colours that I've used in very small amounts, um, you shouldn't need to buy more yarn. Um, but there will be a list of all the yarns needed in the pattern. So this is the cushion that I've made in line with recipe two, which is the cotton and bamboo yarn, the naturals from Starcraft. Um, this one is almost the same front and back. I've just used different motifs. So you'll see again, it's a set of um, nine motifs that make up the square panel. Um, on this side, it's up to you which is the front and which is the back. On this side, I've used the hollyhock, the purple aster and my lovely, I love the clementine at the middle there. Um, and then on the other side of the cushion, I've kind of mixed it up a bit. I've got the clementine again at the center, but I've put chrysanthemum and dianthus on the other side so that you could get an idea. If you wanted to practice, you can play about with those motifs. Um, so this is just made with the two panels. I've added a border, which I wanted it to look like a kind of cord, like old cushions had. Um, when Mae Morris did her cushion designs, she would invariably then sew a kind of cord around the outside edge. So I've used that first edging that we did on the blanket to make this nice sort of 3D cord, which I hope you'll enjoy doing. It's four rows, four rounds of colour work this time, um, but on a much smaller scale compared to your blanket. So that's um, straightforward, you will have done that before. And then what I've done is I've actually put a button band there, if you can see that along that side, so that the edging does, it kind of stops, although it's still made there, but it's not sewn down. And we've got again these nice brassy buttons on there to make it look quite authentic and uh, as May would probably approve of metal buttons and not plastic ones. Um, so that's the second cushion. Um, what we're going to do, as I think I said in the introduction, is we're going to put these patterns onto my website in September. Um, what we're going to do is, if you want a paper pattern, then there will be a small charge for that. If you want to download the pattern, then the patterns for these will be free. What you can do is go across to the Starcraft website and download the existing motif patterns. And then I've done a document that tells you how to actually put them together to make the cushion. Um, it's taken quite a lot of work to do the cushions. It's more work that I've done, obviously, on top of the crochet along. Um, so what I'm going to suggest is that if any of you do want to make a little donation towards the cost of those for me, obviously you can download the patterns for free, but if you do want to make a small donation in September when those go live, then that would be great. It just enables me to keep doing what I do. Um, so that's it. There's the two cushions coming in September. There's the new colourway of the crochet along, which I have here again to show you. The new colour of the crochet along, the new blanket. We haven't given it a name yet, so I'm still thinking up a name for this one. Um, we're calling it version 3, um, but it will have a nice name when it comes out 
properly in October. Um, so this comes out in October and um, I'm really looking forward to doing the whole thing all over again with um, a load of you. So it will run through from October through to January, um, gives you something to do in those colder, colder nights of January. Um, so that going into next year when hopefully everything is back to normal or normal-ish, um, the new normal, I don't like that, but the new normal, um, hopefully by next year you'll go into the year with your new blanket and, uh, and a new beginning. And uh, that's it for me. I really look forward to seeing you again in the autumn when we start all this all over again. And um, in the meantime, as I keep saying, stay safe and I'll see you soon.